Hello, my name is Craig Clafter, and I'm speaking to you today from the College Chapel at Bates College in Lewiston, Maine. I've developed this channel to help international students make well-informed decisions in choosing to study abroad. I hope you find this video useful. This video is about how to assess your candidacy for undergraduate admission. I will be discussing why assess your candidacy, the criteria the institution uses, assessing your attributes, determining the institution's profile of accepted students, comparing yourself to the profile, and strategies you should adopt. Correctly assessing your candidacy for an institution of higher education is important. For most of them charge application fees and wasting money is never a wise thing to do. Applying to an institution where you have no chance of being admitted or to many institutions where it would be easy to be admitted would be a waste of time. It is better to be strategic and that depends on knowing your chances of gaining admission. American institutions of higher education typically evaluate applicants for undergraduate admission based on their high school curriculum, grades, class rank, standardized test scores, essays, references, portfolio or recordings for artistic programs, and extracurricular activities. Each institution, however, has its own criteria, which can be found on its website. For example, Rice University in Texas looks for rigor of a student's coursework, academic performance, class rank, grade point average, and test scores, extracurricular activities and achievements, essays, and demonstrated interest in the institution. Most selective and highly selective institutions look for a college preparatory curriculum from applicants for undergraduate admission. Generally, students are expected to successfully complete four years of literature, four years of mathematics, three to four years of social studies, three to four years of science, including laboratory experience, and two to four years of foreign language. However, accommodation is typically made for foreign educational systems that do not offer all of these courses. There are substitutes for a traditional college preparatory curriculum. An international baccalaureate diploma is particularly prized among highly selective institutions due to the rigor of the curriculum and standards. International baccalaureate curriculum consists of core, theory of knowledge, the extended essay, and creativity, activity, and service, and subject areas, studies in language and literature, language acquisition, individuals and societies, sciences, mathematics, and the arts. Another substitute for a college preparatory curriculum is for students who have not fulfilled the minimum requirements or did not complete high school. The general education development tests, when passed at the college ready level, provide certification that the test taker has United States high school level academic skills suitable for admission to American institutions of higher education in place of a high school diploma. Most institutions accept GED in lieu of a high school diploma. Undergraduate admissions offices will usually compute a grade point average based on a student's substantive high school classes only. If you are applying to study physics, for example, grades in physical education or fine art are not likely to be included. Some schools use different scales, for example, one to five or F to A plus. Undergraduate admissions offices will standardize the different grading systems so applicants can be fairly compared. 
Class rank is where your grades position you in relation to your classmates. Class rank is not reported by all high schools. If your high school does report it, however, it can offer a more accurate assessment of academic performance in schools where the average grade awarded varies from the norm. American institutes of higher education traditionally rely on standardized tests to help determine admissibility. The tests for undergraduate admission are Scholastic Assessment Test, SAT, or American College Testing, ACT. Advanced Placement Test, AP, are given after a student completes an AP course to determine if the student's performance is worthy of university credit. Internationally, only some international schools offer AP courses. The tests for English proficiency are Test of English as a Foreign Language, TOEFL, International English Language Testing System, IELTS, or Pearson Test of English Academic, PTE. Most American institutions of higher education value applicants to undergraduate programs who have participated in extracurricular activities. Extracurricular activities include volunteer activities, organized sporting competition, student government, employment, engagement with a religion, or artistic performances. These activities build character, develop attributes, and provide opportunities to display leadership. Undergraduate admissions officers prefer applicants who exhibit a sustained commitment to one or two activities rather than brief participation in many activities. Assessing your attributes involves determining your high school grade point average, GPA, the average of all grades earned, determining your high school class rank if available, analyzing your high school curriculum, considering your extracurricular activities, determining your standardized test scores, and determining your English language proficiency score. American institutions of higher education provide profiles of past admitted students on their websites. Undergraduate admissions profiles include high school GPAs, SAT or ACT scores, and minimum English language proficiency scores required. There are two ways to find admissions profiles. You can search profile from an institution's homepage or use College Simply, which consolidates much, but not all of the profile information. For example, the profile for Colgate University in New York is as follows. SAT, middle 50% of the range between 1370 and 1500. ACT for the middle 50% of the range between 31 and 34. Average GPA of 3.81 out of 4.0. 80% of the admitted students were in the top 10% of their class. 93% of admitted students were in the top 20% of the class. The TOEFL IBT minimum was 100 and the IELTS minimum was 7. Comparing yourself to the profile is the next step. Let's take a sample undergraduate admission profile from a fictitious institution. At this institution, the average SAT score was 1365. The bottom 25% of admitted students had 1250 and the top 25% averaged 1510. The average high school GPA was 3.69 and 80% of admitted students were in the top 25% of their high school class. The minimum TOEFL IBT score was 100. Now let's assume a student with 1365 SAT scores, a 3.69 GPA, who is graduated in the top 25% of their high school class and whose TOEFL score exceeds 100. For this student, 
this institution would be a good fit. That is, they're likely to be admitted. Here's another student with 1250 SAT score, 3.5 GPA, who graduated in the top 35% of their high school class and whose TOEFL score is precisely the minimum of 100. This student falls a bit below the average of the admissions profile. And as such for this student, this institution would be a reach. It would be a bit more difficult to get into. Here's a student with outstanding record of achievement, 1510 SAT, 3.8 GPA, in the top 10% of their class and with a TOEFL score far in excess of 100. For this student, compared to the average of the admissions profile, this institution would be relatively easy to be admitted to. Therefore, this institution would be a safety. And finally, here's a student with less than 1250 SAT scores, less than a 3.4 GPA, in the top 50% of their high school class, and with TOEFL scores less than the minimum required of 100. This student is not likely to be accepted by this institution. Your best strategy should be to apply to institutions that are a good fit, a reach, and a safety. If your finances are limited, I would recommend that you apply to one of each. If you have a bit more money, consider applying to two of each. If finances are not a constraint, the most I would recommend would be to apply to three of each. The chances of securing a scholarship increase the better an applicant's candidacy. For example, a student whose GPA and standardized test scores are in the top 10% of admitted students is much more likely to receive a scholarship. Those institutions in your safety category are better opportunities for you to secure a scholarship. You should attend the best institution you can get into and afford. If the cost prevents you from attending a prestigious institution, don't worry. Performing very well at a lesser institution will not be a disadvantage to graduate and professional program admission. If you found this video informative, please indicate that you liked it and subscribe to my channel. I'm regularly developing new content. Thank you.